Zimbabwe in central southern Africa is situated on a high plateau between two great rivers. Although parts of the country suffer from periodic drought, the Zimbabwean economy combines mining with a strong agricultural base. It's a beautiful country of distant vistas and wide horizons, of blazing sun and torrential downpours. Outside Africa, Zimbabwe is probably best known for its abundant wildlife and exciting tourist safaris. Zimbabwe, or the House of Stone, as the name means, is indeed a land of contrasts. Contrasting foods, contrasting people, right down to its distribution of water. Here we are, next to Moshi Oyatunya, a smoke that thunders with its abundance of water, in total contrast to southern Matabele land with its drought. The falls drop over 100 meters in a sheer cascade, nearly two kilometers wide, making Mosoyatunya the greatest waterfall in the world. In 1855, some local Zimbabweans very kindly took the British explorer, Dr. David Livingston, to see this great waterfall. Livingston was knocked out by it, of course, and promptly gave it the English name Victoria Falls after his favorite woman, Queen Victoria. After plunging over Mosiatunya, the Zambezi River flows northeast into Lake Kariba and through the mighty hydroelectric turbines of the Kariba Dam. Another legendary river, the Great Grey Green Greasy Limpopo River, so vividly described by Rudyard Kipling, forms the southernmost boundary of Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe was the name of the great stone palaces built by early Shona people for their kings. The greatest and most famous was built in the 14th century as the capital of the great Monomotapa kingdom, which included most of modern-day Zimbabwe and much of Mozambique. After two centuries of trade with European and Arab traders, the power of Monomotapa declined in the 16th century. But a legacy of this time has been the passing on of many culturally diverse cuisines and foods. Britain colonized the country as Rhodesia in 1890, and 90 years later, Southern Rhodesia finally regained independence as Zimbabwe in 1980. Now, one of Zimbabwe's principal industries is the business of welcoming visitors to this beautiful country. Not as colonists or invaders or anything like that, but as tourists. And tourists have to eat. One local delicacy which tourists are eating plenty of is crocodile meat. Crocodiles are protected in the wild, but they're being farmed on ranches and the meat has become very popular. It tastes like a cross between white meat and seafood. Um, freshwater chicken maybe? It's great smoked and the best parts to eat, I'm told, are the jaw and the tail. There are some pretty amazing recipes on this menu too, but I'll have to come back and try croc creole and croc pot stew. Oh, I'm not so sure about the deep fried croc balls though. Mm. A very pleasant way to view crocodiles and other game is from a Zambezi cruise boat. And it's also a chance to ask other visitors what they eat in Zimbabwe. What have you eaten here in Zimbabwe, which is different? Mainly steak. <laughs> nice big steaks. <laughs> well, I eat anything, but normally people eat like salsa and um, no pea. Now, what is your favorite food? Uh, roast beef. Roast beef cooked in any particular way? Just, uh, just roast beef and potatoes and <laughs> all the rest. So you don't, you don't particularly eat traditional Zimbabwean food? No, sometimes we eat sadza, but that's about all. Okay. Um, sadza and meat. I have had sadza a previous time I've come here. Yeah. Oh. All right. Sadza is a stiff porridge made from mealies or maize, which is similar to sweet corn, but different in taste and texture. Mealies are Zimbabwe's staple diet. They're eaten in all sorts of different ways, roasted on a cob, dried and made into flour called mealy meal, or pounded and boiled and cooked into sadza. 
In Zimbabwe, everybody eats satsa. Locals and tourists, rich and poor, in the Bele and Shona. <laughs> Wherever you find a Zimbabwean, you're sure to find sadza. Hmm. And of course, to make sure the sadza keeps flowing, you must have mealies. Right here, oh, nice and hot. Beautiful. Yeah. And Rosemary here is teaching me how to make this wonderful stuff. Ah, I've learned something of Shona. That means in order for salsa to enter, it must be accompanied by sauce always. What sauce have you got today, Rosemary? Morigo we nyama. Nyama. Vegetables and meat. Yum. Lovely. And this is the vegetable. What sort of vegetable is this? Morigo we red. Morigo red. So red vegetable. And I've seen you put this on stuff in that pot. What vegetable is that one? Moriwo. We're kofo. Kofo. So we've got rape and kofo to accompany our wonderful salsa. Oh, I must say, I do know when to show up at meal times. These young people are doing the Jerusalem dance, which is usually performed at engagement parties and weddings. It's a chance for the unmarried girls to tease the boys, and I think the meaning is quite obvious. We're great travelers, Africans. We love to visit friends and relatives in other towns and villages. So the bus station is a place for happy meetings and sad partings. A place for waiting patiently and a place to stock up on provisions for the long, dusty, usually bumpy journey ahead. Although Zimbabwe is comparatively rich in natural resources, the country suffers from periodic droughts. Then it's the people in the country who suffer the greatest hardship as food runs low and there is no alternative but to seek work in the city. The most common method of traveling the long distances in Africa is by bus. So for many people, Harare bus station is their first site of the capital city. The name of an illustrious early African ruler, Harare means one who doesn't sleep. And the people of Harare, also known as the Sunshine City, certainly seem to work hard. Zimbabweans were really united during the devastating drought in the late 1980s. For a while there, the water resources were so low that people in the west affected areas like Bulawayo could only flush their toilets once a day, that is, if they were lucky enough to have one. At the appointed hour, all radio and television stations would interrupt their programs and tell people to stand by their toilets. Then, on a signal, everybody flashed together. Well, the nation that flashes together stays together. <laughs> Harare has plenty of modern fast food outlets for busy city workers, but it also has a fantastic produce market where you can buy anything you might need, plus a few other things you've probably never thought about, like recycled inner tubes and dried caterpillars. This is the Mbare Musika market in Harare, the biggest in Zimbabwe. Produce here has come from all over the country. And that's what's brought me here, because I've discovered a whole range of greens I've never seen before. Amazing stuff. Now, this here is Matora, and it comes from Matabele land. It reminds me of the Aboriginal Wichita grabs. Apparently, it's very easy to cook. You just soak it in some water for about five minutes, tip off the water, then put it in the fry pan or saucepan, toss in some onions and tomato and a little bit of cooking oil, and hey, presto, you've got a dish. I'm told they're delicious, and who am I to disagree? I'll try anything once. Well, almost anything. Remember the greens? This is pumpkin leaves, and this is? This is tunga. 
tsunga. Yes. All right. Now I'd like to buy a bunch of this and a bunch of tsunga to yes. try. How much are they, by the way? Fifty cents each. All right. So if they are two, it's, it is dollar. All right. Thank yes. you very much. Now, how do you cook this? You, you cook it like uh, what you do to rape, you know. Right, so yeah. I will just cut it up. We cut into pieces and uh, put it in the pot. Then we add water and salt. Then after it boil for 15 minutes, we add cooking oil or peanut butter. I see. So it's cooked like rape? Yes, we cook like rape, this one. Ah, yes. Done, consider it done. Pumpkin flowers are also delicious. They can be simply fried in butter, but they can also be stuffed or coated in a butter mix first. The male flowers of the pumpkin are harvested as they bloom, leaving the female flowers to develop into fruit. Rape is obviously a popular green vegetable here. It's a relative of the cabbage family, and the seeds produce an oil which is used for cooking. I love the way the okra, also known as ladies' fingers or gumbo, is presented in this market. Each pile with a chili on top, as if to suggest the way in which it should be cooked. In Zimbabwe, okra is called derere, and people cook it by adding a pinch of bicarbonate of soda to the cooking water, which increases the glutinous quality of the dish. Most of the vegetables in this market are sold whole, but some can be bought pre-prepared, cleaned and chopped and ready to take home for a quick meal. Have you ever needed an extra set of hands to do something with? Well, if the feeling grabs you next time, go the African way and do as I do. Put the weight or shopping or whatever on your head and go for it, march for it. The me movement is a bit like Balinese dance. It's not a head movement, it's a neck balance. Your neck shifts your head to go with the load. And of course, it leaves you two free hands to do what you like with or even to tell people where to go. Of course, if you've got a patch of garden, it's wonderful to grow your own vegetables. Dorothy Chadenga is a renowned Shona cook and she has a beautiful garden. Baby ones. And what about this is Kovo? Yes. Ah, it grows all year round, does it? It does. It's quite thick, isn't it? It is, sir. Quite then this is uh, amongst Kobo. other things Dorothy grows pumpkins and mealies this is a wonderful array of Zimbabwean dishes and of course taking pride of place is the national dish the salsa now then what what about this one what is this that is uh, pumpkin leaf mixed with uh, peanut butter and uh, tomatoes. Now, what about this one? That is chewed beef mixed with rape. Rape, as in the English vegetable, rape. Yes. These are gem squash, which are just boiled, and you have the pumpkin leaf stuffed into the gem squash. A gem, as in precious. Yes, mm, yes. Wonderful. Now, what about this for colors? Stunning. It looks as green as your Sandawana emeralds. Yes, that, that is kovo, similar to chomolia. Now then, what, what about this one? What is this? We call them mapuzi. Mapuzi? Yes, and uh, we use those as a dessert. It's boiled and uh, it's eaten with either milk and sugar or on its own. And uh, it's supposed to neutralize the tummy after eating acid foods, like uh, a lot of starch. See, now this is it here, isn't it? Yes. Amazing, this is just boiled. Yes. Right. So now we have food as medicine. Pumpkins are not just eaten as a vegetable, but as a dessert or a sweet or as an antacid. Perhaps we can have a little taste, do you think? Yes, yes. Just sure. a bit of sugar here. And a bit of milk. Can I just uh, yes, take one out? Yes. Thank you. I'm going to try it. Mmm. Now we're in Dorothy's kitchen and she's going to show me how to cook hukuna dovi or chicken dovi or chicken cooked in peanut sauce. And I'm of course helping doing my bits by peeling the pumpkin leaves, which is the vegetable to go with the dish. 
chicken has always been regarded in our culture as a favorite, as a special dish, and um, cut it up, boil it like I have it here. Um, I just have a look at that. And uh, once all the water is evaporated, um, it's uh, roasted and the onions. Um, onions is added into it. This is just finely chopped onions. Yes, finely chopped onions. Also tomatoes are added in. And uh, we prepare the peanut butter sauce. We just use a dessert, spool, a dessert spoonful of um, peanut butter. Add a little bit of water. Make a paste. Okay, we're getting there. Pour it in. Right. Right. Takes a bit of mixing, doesn't it? Yes, it does. And now we take the pot away to simmer. I've got to tell you about the pumpkin. Every single bit of that plant is edible, except perhaps the stalks. The fruit, the leaves, the flowers, and of course the seeds. You can peel the pumpkin seeds and serve them up with drinks as pepitas, or you can salt the unpeeled pumpkin seeds and roast them and serve them up with drinks just the same. Or, of course, you can cook the pumpkin flowers in all sorts of amazing recipes. Coconut milk, or you can cook it with okra. Or here, we're going to finally chop the pumpkin leaves and then toss them about in a little bit of butter with onion and garlic and serve it up with a chicken dovey. Splendid. Ah. So how's it going? Pretty well, actually. It's uh, almost cooked, smelling. It looks quite sumptuous. Mm -hmm. And I uh, have a sample here in my oven. All oh, right. Oh, what I've just finished cooking. Oh, yeah. So you can yes, yes. Oh, oh yeah. Well, let me tell you something. If New Zealand rides on the back of the sheep, Africa definitely rides on the back of chicken. Chicken is eaten all over the continent every day, cooked in a myriad of different ways. In Africa, the tougher, older, free-range chickens are considered a delicacy because they're so full of flavor. If you ever get served chicken like that in Africa, you should feel really complimented. In my family, we call old free-range chickens Professor Chickens because they must be really smart to have lasted that long. Kariba is an artificial lake, 280 kilometers long and formed when the Zambezi River was dammed to produce hydroelectric power. The lake is teeming with fish, including tiger fish, carpenta and bream and it's also home to all sorts of water birds and mammals. The locals catch fish in nets, which they set in the shallow water around the edge of the lake. They have very functional boats made out of beaten metal, and although it looks as if they're paddling from the wrong end, doing it this way means that the boat is easier to steer and maneuver. and think of few more relaxing ways to while away the time. Hmm. This one certainly didn't get away, you smart boys. There's something very inviting about fish. This here is beautiful, fresh Lake Cariba bream. It needs very little fuss to bring out the beautiful, delicate flavor. And uh, Patricia here is just going to cut it in half, drop it in just a little bit of vegetable oil, seasoned, and with nice, fresh tomatoes. That's totally contrasting, of course, to this equally fresh bream here, which has been smoked so delicately. Are you going to serve both with the uh, sadza? Yes, or else by itself. I can quite believe that. You don't need to eat it with anything to taste the freshness of it, soft, as you can imagine. Delicious. There are other fishermen on Lake Kariba, but the paradox is that they are fishing for much smaller fish on a bigger scale. Carpenta are one of the staple foods of Zimbabwe, 
They are tiny freshwater fish like sardines or white bait, and they are caught in big round nets off the back of floating platforms called carpenter rigs. The fish are attracted by a light suspended above the net, which is pulled up every couple of hours. As soon as the carpenter are caught, they are salted, and then they are laid out to dry in the sun for a few days. Just like liquid silver, Carpenta is precious protein. It can be eaten fresh or salted and dried, in which case it lasts for months. Fresh carpenta is deep fried like white bait or cooked with vegetables. Dried salted carpenta, however, has a very strong taste and it's used as a relish, rather like anchovies on pizza. It's very popular and sold in packets all over the country. As well as providing Zimbabwe with valuable food resources, Lake Kariba has become a tourist paradise, the perfect spot for fishing, boating, and game viewing. These elephants live on the shores of Lake Kariba. The amazing variety of animals in Zimbabwe's game parks serves as a reminder that the area has always been very rich in wild game, and this had a big influence on the traditional diet of the Ndebele people, who were also great warriors. <laughs> Thank you. In the Ndebele diet, the emphasis is on meat, which is to be expected, because the Ndebeles are originated from the Zulus of Southern Africa, who are traditionally hunter-gatherers. Now that's in total contrast to the Shawnees, who are descended from the Bantus, and whose diet include large amounts of greens, such as chumolia, rape, derere, bohora, I'm not getting those words right, and, um, and they cook it with the meat. But having then said that, that's not to say that the Ndebele haven't developed ways, wonderful ways of cooking and eating and preserving their meat. It can be lightly seasoned and boiled to prepare it for soups or stews or dry roasted, or just plain dried, rather like the South African biltong, which keeps for months. In Africa, offal is as popular as the other cuts of meat. And here, some tender liver has been seasoned and cooked to perfection, ready to be presented together with vegetables and a hot satsa. Traditionally, of course, the Indebele lived on the game from these rich savanna lands, but nowadays these animals are protected and it's more usual to eat the more domesticated animals like goats, sheep and cattle. And it certainly makes far more sense than consuming one of Zimbabwe's most valuable resources, safari animals. <laughs> A land of contrasts, the food, the people, and of course, the music.